Hi, I'm Pablo. And I'm Leon. We're going old school. We want to introduce you to the LEGO Nintendo Entertainment System. The product is a replica of the 1980s Nintendo Entertainment System control deck. It comes with a game pack, of course a controller to play with, and a TV to play it on. And we try to replicate all the minute detail, like the lip on the front of the lid, and of course all the ports around the control deck. So of course you can open the lid to insert the game pack, and it has the push-push mechanism to make it go down and come back up again when you're done playing. We also built a replica of the controller, and you can plug it into the control deck. And we want to make sure that the feeling when you hold it is almost the same when you hold the original one. So scale-wise, the controller is pretty much one-to-one. -one. Uh, for the control deck, we let the bricks to decide the scale. To get some of the uh, details right, we had to use some pretty complex building techniques. For me, the mechanism inside the control deck was very complex to build. We make few iterations and finally we find one that really works. We tested it in a rubber machine for 8,000 times and it worked perfectly. You can also take off the top to have a closer look at how the mechanism works. Hi, I'm Dara and I'm a senior LEGO designer. I'm Anthony and I'm a graphic designer. I worked mainly on the design for the TV. So growing up, I actually had an old TV that was a you know, big old thing with wood veneer and big chunky analog controls. And it was very, very 1980s style and, and that's where the starting point came from. So most of my design inspiration is pure nostalgia, really. Way back in, I think it was autumn of 2018, we started making sketch models for the NES and the early sketch models was just a mosaic on the screen, which was a static thing. And we thought we could try and do something more exciting and, and more challenging. So we designed a scrolling mechanism based on using some Technic tracks to make a belt, which sits inside the body of the TV and creates an infinite loop where you see Mario running through the level but uh, it was still a huge, huge challenge to use the Technic track system in that way because you're basically, you're taking the belts, that you're putting them on the side and that's not something they're originally designed for. So we had quite a heavy mechanism that needed to run smoothly. Um, so there was many weeks and months of working with the gears and the runners under the screen to try and make it run as smoothly as possible and also as quietly as possible. The level we chose to go with is based on some of the key icons from level 1-1 of the original Super Mario Bros game. Lots of little steps and jumps and uh, characters to, to tackle along the way. Primarily, I designed the stickers for the game pack, uh, as well as all the enemies for the decorations on screen. You know, the Koopas, the Goombas, and uh, even the power-ups like the Mushroom. Uh, for me, my favorite part was the 8-Bit Mario. It was really great that we were going for a uh, level of authenticity. So the Mario is pixel for pixel perfect to the uh, representation on the screen. Actually, a really cool uh, tidbit is that this is the first LEGO element that was designed graphic first, and the element had to be designed around it. So actually, one of my favorite details is actually the sticker on the back, which is something that all old el electronics had, but it's a thing you don't really think about. It's just a sticker with specs and model names and serial numbers and stuff like that on but we were actually able to sneak a lot of little Easter eggs in there and we got the full specs of the LEGO TV. So we actually measured the screen refresh rate as nine studs per second. And we got the aspect ratio of 14 by 16 studs. Hi, I'm uh, Benjamin. I'm a digital designer on the LEGO Super Mario sets. Initially, I wasn't actually really working on this set. Uh, I was working on the LEGO Super Mario sets, but uh, as soon as Dara built the scrolling level, uh, he and I both started coming up with a lot of ideas on how maybe we can make this NES even cooler. And that's where we got the idea of 
integrating the Lego Mario that comes in the Lego Mario starter course. On top of the uh, retro TV, there's a lid that you can actually pop off and then you can put him on top of the TV and as you scroll through, you will hear the sound effects for what's actually happening on the screen. So as you see the 8-bit Mario jump up into the question mark block, it will actually make the question mark block sound from the Lego Mario uh, experience. As well as when Lego Mario jumps on the Goombas, you will hear the iconic Goomba sound or when he stomps on the uh, Koopa Troopers, you will also hear the stomp on the shell. There's also the classic coin sound when you pick up a coin, and uh, as Nintendo would say it, it's a chatting. So when we played around with it a lot, we discovered that the uh, LEGO Mario actually has a feature where if you don't move him for a while, he goes into a power saving mode. And we discovered that the best way to uh, wake him back up again is to give the TV a little, a little bump uh, to wake it back up and make it work again. For me, the best part of the set is the scrolling screen. And I really like the controller. As soon as you grab it, the muscle memory kicks in and you just want to start playing again. 